I'll tell you what, I've been hearing him speak lately, and he's a better speaker. I think he's a better prepared candidate than when he almost won back in 2008. So it's a real pleasure for us to welcome to the Ronald Reagan Newsmaker Luncheon State Treasurer and Senate candidate John Kennedy. Welcome. <laughs> Now, you can blame that on governors all you want to, but under our Constitution, as Woody knows, because he helped draft it, it's the legislature that passes the budget. So when they pretend to be so shocked, they were there. <laughs> In 2005, the state budget was $16.5 billion. Today it's $25 billion. We've, got, we've grown our budget 42% over 10 years when the Louisiana economy, measured by gross domestic product, has only increased 25%. Government has grown. Here's Governor Edwards' request of, the, of, of Louisiana. He wants Louisiana businesses and Louisiana families to cut their budgets so state government doesn't have to cut its budget. And that's not right. Please, we are one tax increase away from prosperity. <laughs> he is proposing the largest tax increase in the history of the state. I met with him. He's deadly serious. He is proposing to raise personal income taxes, sales taxes, corporate income taxes, corporate franchise taxes, business utility taxes, inventory taxes. He wants a new internet tax cigarette taxes, liquor taxes, he wants to start taxing services, and I'm sure I'm leaving some out. <laughs> it won't work. Number one, it'll wreck this economy. Number two, I don't care how high you raise revenue. As long as you keep spending more than you take in, you're going to run deficits. Send him a copy of the Cut the Fat report, authored in part by then Senator Darden in 2001. <laughs> and I sent him I recommended that we undedicate all 156 of them, let that money go into the general fund, and the recipients, the former recipients of the money, now have to compete with higher education and health care and roads and prove their worth. Because I don't think we ought to be funding the Sunflower Festival, that's one of them, the Polk Salad Festival, or the Red Bud Festival, when the governor's threatened to uh, shut down LSU. That will free up about three, I checked this morning the balance, about $389 million. Now, the governor and his financial advisors say it won't work. Well, I, I've got here, if you want to see it, a newspaper article from uh, in October when Governor Edwards and Commissioner Darden were both running for governor, and they were asked the question, what's the first thing you'll do? And they said, we're going to eliminate the, the, the statutory dedication. <laughs> so I don't know what's happened in three months to make it a bad idea, but it'll work. Number hired 4,017 new consultants last year. Now, the amount of the money, I'll show you the report, $14.5 billion. It's on page four, paragraph three of the report. Now that money's gonna be spent over seven years. Several years. Let me give you some examples. We're supposed to be broke, right? Uh -huh. A few months ago, they hired a consultant here in Baton Rouge for $11.6 million. Her job is to develop, to develop a marketing and communications plan for the Louisiana Department of Economic Development. We hired for, I think, $12 million, a consultant from out of state. His, their job, it's a company, is to develop a, food, a, a, a website for our food stamp recipient, recipients at the Department of Children and Family Services. Now, let me tell you something. Our neighbors on food stamps don't need a website. They need help getting a job. We're supposed to be broke now. A few months ago, they, they, they hired two different artists. They're paying them together $1.1 million to create a sculpture for one of our public hospitals. Now, how are we doing this if we're broke? How, why would we do this when we're looking Louisiana taxpayers in the eye and saying, we need more of your money? Number three, 22% 
according to the legislative auditor, of all of our managers in the classified service of state government manage one employee. You couldn't manage your business that way. The average manager of Louisiana State government manages four employees. We ought to do what Secure recommended in 1995 and reorganize and go to a span of control of one boss for eight employees. Number four. Last year, these are not my numbers, they're PARS numbers. We had 900,000 visits to emergency rooms paid for by taxpayers for non-emergencies. Let me be more specific. While we're visiting today, folks on Medicaid are taking an ambulance ride to go to an emergency room to get treated for acne, to get a pregnancy test, to have a wart removed, see if they need glasses, to talk to somebody about losing weight. Now that's legal. And we will pay for those services under Medicaid, but neither state nor federal law requires us to deliver those services in an emergency room where it costs five times more to do it. All we got to do is go over to Houston, to Houston's Memorial Hermann Hospital, and copy their patient navigator program, where they put a paraprofessional at the entrance of every ER. When somebody comes in and says, hey, my acne's bad, they're told, look, we're going to get you an appointment with a doctor, but not here in the ER. Not here. If we could cut those 900,000 taxpayer funded visits by 10%, we'd save tens, maybe hundreds of millions of dollars. Last one. Our Medicaid program is supervised by a federal agency called the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services, it's called CMS. CMS has estimated that 10% of the money we spend on Medicaid is attributable fraud to fraud. Now, we are spending $9 billion a year on Medicaid, soon to be about $11 billion, and that's including the overhead at DHS. 10% of $9 billion is $900 million. Even if CMS is half wrong, that's $450 million. And you know what we're doing about it? Not a debt going on. <laughs> we need to ask Darrell Prepare, the legislative auditor, to embed about 15 legislative auditors over at DHH, and we need to root out this fraud and prosecute the perpetrators to the full extent of the law. And we will save millions and millions of dollars because it's not fair to taxpayers and it's not fair to the people who really need the free government. I just gave you in five minutes six suggestions that will save at least a billion dollars. And, and there are a lot more. Look, we, uh, you know, I hate, hate to paraphrase James Carver, but, but it's the spending, <laughs> stupid. <laughs> we don't have a revenue problem nearly as much as we have a spending problem. And this much I know. Um, we cannot tax, and we cannot spend, and we cannot regulate ourselves in the prospect. And anybody who believes otherwise obviously failed history class. It has been an honor to be here today.